What's going on everyone? It's the Raving Wolf, the Reformation King and Dimitrovic, and today I'm here with a new video. It's going to be about mental health stereotypes. So if you've ever known anybody who has ever had mental illness or had any mental health condition, you might have a lot of questions. And I think a lot of times what happens is a lot of these questions turn into negative stereotypes. And as someone who does suffer on a daily basis and as someone who does know what it's like to be stereotyped against, but also advocated for, I know both sides of the spectrum. So we're going to get started with five mental health slash mental illness stereotypes. Number five, people with mental illness are dangerous. This is the farthest thing from the truth because it all depends on what you classify as mental illness. So, uh, you know, there's many conditions like bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, borderline personality disorder, but I don't think it's fair to make a comment or to make uh, an insinuation that because you have a mental health condition, it makes you more dangerous than anybody else. Anybody can do anything on any given day. However, it doesn't make sense in my opinion to tell someone, hey, you have bipolar disorder, you're gonna probably snap before somebody else or hey, you're a schizophrenic, you know what? You can probably go take out someone right now if you chose to. Mental illness doesn't work that way. It's It depends on the person and to just say that every person with some sort of mental illness is violent is not true at all. Again, it depends on the person and it depends on the situation because there is, again, a fight or flight response where people, you know, they might throw a chair if, um, you know, they're kind of preyed upon or they're cornered, you know, things happen. But a lot of times people with mental illness are actually more prone to being, uh, to being uh, put against violence, if that makes sense. So they're more prone to being the ones that are victims rather than the ones that are being perpetrators. Number four, people with mental illness are unpredictable. I think this kind of goes into the uh, dangerous category too. Uh, so five and four are kind of intertwined. But again, it depends on the person. It doesn't necessarily depend on the illness. So anybody, like I said, anybody can do anything on any given day. But again, I can't stress this enough. There is more that meets the eye. So being unpredictable is very subjective. What do we mean by unpredictable? Do we mean someone's going to walk down the street and go hit somebody? Or do we take it even a bit farther? Again, it's going to depend on the situation. And it's going to depend on the individual involved. And it's not fair to compromise hundreds of thousands of people in comparison to one person. So again, you have to look at it too from, from a, a numeric perspective of where not every single person is gonna do the same thing that one person with the illness is doing. So therefore, the fact that all people with mental illnesses are dangerous is dismissed. Because again, like I said previously, they're the ones that are more um, prone to being victimized rather than them doing the victimization. So always keep that in mind. Number three, they're unreliable. That depends again on the person. And I know it's going to sound like a recurring theme, like a thesis statement at this point, but it depends on the person and it also depends on their day-to-day -day life and it depends on the schedule they have. If their schedule's a bit more rigorous, then you know they're more prone to burnout depending on the condition. So again, it truly depends on your product of environment and it also um, pertains to your day-to-day -day life. And if somebody is late, things happen. If they're consistently late and you know that they have a condition, I don't think it hurts to be a little proactive and maybe ask what's, you know, what's going on or what's happening or what can be done to maybe help prevent that going in the future. You know, there's um, a new thing, especially at my university, there's accommodations for people with mental illness. And uh, these are done to help them in their experiences flourish in the in day-to-day -day society and also with their peers in the classroom. So things like that can be added. There can be adaptations. There doesn't need to be a whole reform in terms of, you know, changing everything in terms of scheduling, but there can be minor adaptations made to help that person. And it's, I don't think as an employer, it's going to hurt you if you make a small adaptation because you probably have a lot more employees than just one. Number three, they're unreliable. That depends again on the person. And I know it's gonna sound like a recurring theme, like a thesis statement at this point, but 
it depends on the person and it also depends on their day-to-day -day life and it depends on the schedule they have if their schedule is a bit more rigorous then you know they're more prone to burnout depending on the condition so again it truly depends on your product of environment and it also um, pertains to your day-to-day -day life and if somebody is late things happen if they're consistently late and you know that they have a condition I don't think it hurts to be a little proactive and maybe ask what's you know what's going on or what's happening or what can be done to maybe help prevent that going in the future you know there's um a new thing especially at my university there's accommodations for people with mental illness and uh these are done to help them in their experiences flourish in the in day-to-day -day society and also with their peers in the classroom so things like that can be added there can be adaptations there doesn't need to be a whole reform in terms of you know changing everything in terms of scheduling but there can be minor adaptations made to help that person and it's i don't think as an employer it's going to hurt you if you make a small adaptation because you probably have a lot more employees than just one number two they're faking it unfortunately this does happen and uh it is it is really difficult to control but I don't think that stereotype should be exclusive for everybody because there are a lot of people who suffer on a daily basis that do not get the treatment that they that they desperately need in order to um i hate saying it like this but to survive and uh you know a lot of people do fake it and that's not good it's it, it's it's a really um it's a really bad part of society that that it happens however i don't think it's necessarily fair to um you know put a stop to mental illness because uh somebody's just decided to be lazy and complacent and doesn't actually want to do anything with their lives so that's a, unfortunately going to happen but it doesn't mean that everybody needs to suffer it doesn't mean that the people that actually have mental illness need to suffer so that stereotypes out of the window for me uh because there's a lot of people who go to work and they suffer, but they feel like they can't say anything because their boss is going to tell them that they're faking it or their boss is going to insinuate that they're faking it when really that this person is really walking the edge and uh, very close to um, having something catastrophic happen to them. And this is just based off facts, guys. This is based off of real statistics. If you look at self-harm rates, if you look at hospitalization rates, you look at suicide rates, which unfortunately I've been a part of all three, it really speaks volumes to how many people, not just in Canada, but in the United States, Europe, worldwide, everywhere, really go through a mental health crisis because it legitimately is a crisis. So this one, this stereotype, fully dismissed. Number two, they're faking it. Unfortunately, this does happen and uh, it is it is really difficult to control, but I don't think that stereotype should be exclusive for everybody because there are a lot of people who suffer on a daily basis that do not get the treatment that they, that they desperately need in order to, um, I hate saying it like this, but to survive. And, uh, you know, a lot of people do fake it and that's not good. It's, 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 it's a really, um, it's a really bad part of society that, that it happens. However, I don't think it's necessarily fair to, um, you know, put a stop to mental illness because, uh, somebody's just decided to be lazy and complacent and doesn't actually want to do anything with their lives. So that's unfortunately going to happen, but it doesn't mean that everybody needs to suffer. It doesn't mean that the people that actually have mental illness need to suffer. So that stereotypes out of the window for me uh, because there's a lot of people who go to work and they suffer, but they feel like they can't say anything because their boss is going to tell them that they're faking it or their boss is going to insinuate that they're faking it when really that this person is really walking the edge and uh, very close to um, having something catastrophic happen to them. And this is just based off facts, guys. This is based off of real statistics. If you look at self-harm rates, if you look at hospitalization rates, you look at suicide rates, which unfortunately I've been a part of all three, 
it really speaks volumes to how many people, not just in Canada, but in the United States, Europe, worldwide, everywhere, really go through a mental health crisis because it legitimately is a crisis. So this one, this stereotype, fully dismissed. Stereotype number one is that people with mental illness have nothing to offer and are not talented. Again, this could not be the farthest thing from the truth. There are so many people who are diagnosed with mental illnesses that have done so much good in this world. And honestly, you wouldn't even know that they have mental illness because either, either they don't speak about it and haven't come out with it, or their talent just eclipses what you already had a preconceived notion about. So truly, this is another stereotype that I just think, um, I think is a perplexing, uh, a perplexing issue. And as someone who's gone through it, I get it. I mean, there are times where people who have mental illness go and do something and they try to perform uh, either not, I'm not just talking about in terms of sports, but I'm talking about like just in general, like going to work and putting a face on and it's really hard for them. It happens. And there are people who do perform and they have such bad anxiety on top of their mental health condition that they can't do anything. So people are, are going to, they're going to come up with these misinterpretations that these people are not talented when really it's just one bad day or their anxiety takes over which isn't a fair statement either because sometimes that happens and it's just, we're human beings, right? We're human beings and we're going to make mistakes. We're going to have off days and it's just a part of life. And I think a lot of times judgment is placed on people with mental illness that they can't do certain things because of the condition they have, but there's not really any good evidence to back that off of. And a lot of people prove other people wrong. You know, I'll give a small example, uh, and I'll, I'm going to use myself because I haven't really told a lot of people this. Uh, when I was in grade 10, I took an IQ test, and I was told I was on the spectrum and that I was uh, the R word. I'm not going to say it publicly on here, uh, but I went back to high school after taking a year off, and I ended up being on the honors of distinction. Uh, when I was told that academically, I was never going to be able to do anything proficient. So it can be done. And the thing is, just because you have some kind of condition, it doesn't mean that you are incapable. And like a lot of people have even told me with, uh, you know, bipolar disorder that I have, like that I, I wouldn't be able to keep up in certain things. And I do what I can to keep up. And uh, sometimes I'm successful, other times I'm not, but when I am successful, I'm very proud of that. So again, it depends on the person and it depends on the situation that they're in. And that's, again, it's been a recurring theme of this video. And uh, if you're out there, please don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to admit that you are struggling because there's always going to be help for you and there's always going to be support for you. And that I can promise you. So please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll be back with more. This is just a foundational aspect of stereotypes for mental illness. And uh, hopefully I can come with more detailed ones and uh, we'll keep this trend going. Thank you and stay safe.